So at the time of recording this, it's been about three weeks since I got my hands on Apple's newest iterations of their big three. So obviously that's the iPhone 16, the Apple Watch 10 and Apple Watch Ultra 2 in black, as well as the AirPods 4 and AirPods 4 A and C. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know that this year's drops have been extremely controversial for a number of reasons. And yes, it mostly surrounds just the iPhone, but a lot of people are also upset about the refreshes for their other products as well. And so rather than make separate videos, I figured it would be easier to put all of my experiences with each of the products in this one video here. And then we can follow up with a long-term review down the line when all the features are actually released. So starting off with the Apple Watches, technically this year there were two announced, although only one of them is actually brand new. So you've got the all black Apple Watch Ultra 2 and I'm just rocking a black titanium band as well. So you've got the Apple Watch 10, which comes in two different finishes. I chose the natural titanium and the natural titanium Milanese Loop Band. And honestly, as someone who already owns an Apple Watch Ultra 2 in natural titanium, it's definitely very hard to justify these purchases. So starting off with the new Apple Watch Ultra, when they announced that they were releasing a black version, I'm pretty sure a lot of people were very excited, but at the same time, a lot of us were very upset as well. So if you don't remember, back when the Apple Watch Ultra 2 was announced, there was a ton of rumors swirling around that there was going to be a black variant, but that never actually came to be, obviously. So you had a lot of people like myself who said, okay, I guess they're not making a black one. Let me just pull the trigger on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 because I've been waiting forever. And so lo and behold, a year later, the black one does come out and then you're stuck with this dilemma of, wow, the black looks really sharp. I really want that, but I already own one. What should I do? Should I buy a new one? Should I trade mine in? Should I sell my old one to get this new one? And so I get why that could be very frustrating for people. And not only that, but this new black colorway doesn't do anything new when compared to the natural titanium version. So if you're someone that already owns an Apple Watch, you're gonna be very hard pressed to wanna buy this one here. And in my humble opinion, while it does look very good, the natural titanium is still the best color to buy. I don't know what it is, it just pops, especially when you pair it with other accessories like a natural titanium smart ring, for example. But the Apple Watch 10 is actually really good and I've been enjoying this guy a lot. So prior to owning the Apple Watch Ultra, I was actually using the Apple Watch SE2. And when you look at Apple Watch 10 side by side with any older Apple Watch, you'll realize that they actually did a lot of different changes on this guy here. The screen is bigger, it's got better viewing angles, it has great battery life, it has new speakers built in so that you're able to listen to like the end of the podcast when you're walking into your house, for example. I don't know, there's just a lot of great things about the Apple Watch 10 where I feel like a lot of people are even switching from the Apple Watch Ultra down to the 10 because it just has that less rugged look and actually looks like a true timepiece that you can wear to any event. Whereas this, while it does look dope, it is very rugged and it's just hard to dress it up a little bit. So yeah, nothing new here, but looks cool. Tons of new stuff here, looks much improved. I think this is the better choice for the majority of people. Now, out of all the products that were announced, I think the ones that I was the most excited by were the new AirPods 4 and the AirPods 4 with ANC. At this point, I've purchased a lot of pairs of AirPods. I've had the original Pros, the Pro 2s, and the AirPods 3. Now, I know everybody's ears are different, but as someone who owns the AirPods Pro 2 and the AirPods 3, I always wish that I could get the same fit of the AirPods 3 with the Pro. So meaning I didn't like the silicone tips necessarily in my ears all the time. I found when it came to like flights or long trips or just having them in your ears all day, it kind of made mine itchy and sweaty and just very uncomfortable. Whereas the AirPods 3 were comfortable all day as long as I wore them, everything was great. So when they announced that the AirPods 4 had a design similar to the 3s, but with updated comfort apparently, and somehow still had active noise canceling, it was pretty much an automatic cop for me. So here are the two cases side by side. These are the AirPods Pro 2s and these are the AirPods 4 with ANC. As you can see, the size difference is crazy. And this is what they look like in the case. So again, very similar profile to what you're used to on the AirPods 3. And yeah, I don't know, when you put these on, they are just very comfortable. They fit nicely in the ear and it's the same AirPod experience that you're used to. However, once you enable that active noise canceling, it kind of turns on a little bit differently than the AirPods Pro 2s do. I find it's a gradual cancellation of the surrounding noise. So when you try them for the first time, you're probably gonna have that split second thought of, wow, the ANC is not very good. But as time progresses, maybe two, three seconds later, and it really hones in all those frequencies that it wants to block out, they do a very good job, despite not actually having a full seal within your ear. But knowing that the AirPods 4 with ANC are way cheaper than the AirPods 2, why would you ever wanna buy this over this? Well, there are a couple differences and some of them might not matter to you, but let's go through them anyways. So during the presentation, they announced a ton of new upgrades coming to the AirPods Pro 2s. These are now fully licensed hearing aids. Yeah, I know, crazy. You can spend like $300 and get fully 
fully accessible hearing aids. But all those things aren't here yet, so let's talk about what's actually here. So like I said, obviously these come with the silicone ear tips that have a proper seal, and so they've got better ANC. The pros also have a touch sensor on the stem, so you're able to play and pause your music as well as change volume by stroking up and down. On the AirPods 4 with ANC, however, they don't have that ability to change volume, and that's something that I didn't realize I used as much as I do until I switch over to the force. So it is kind of annoying having to take that extra step of changing the volume by either sliding the crown on your Apple Watch up and down, actually taking your phone out to adjust the music, or if you're using your Mac, obviously pressing the volume up and volume down. But is it the end of the world? No. Like I said, these are much cheaper. The sound quality is still great. The active noise canceling is still great. And so you're really not missing out on that much if you were to go ahead and choose these guys here. The only thing that I can say so far is that these have always been fantastic when it comes to flights. I'm not sure how great the AirPods 4 ANC would do on an airplane because it is a very loud and sustained noise. It's always gonna be better to have that full seal, but for regular day-to-day -day stuff, you're on the bus or you're riding a bike, maybe you're in a crowded space and you wanna listen to your podcast without all the hum and drum of everybody running around a cafe, for example, then these are obviously gonna be great. Other features that the AirPods 4 ANC share with the AirPods Pro 2s is that they do have a speaker built into the case. So if you ever lose this guy, you're able to jump into the Find My app and you can set this to chime to make it easier to find. And one really silly one that's not gonna matter to anybody, the AirPods Pro 2 have a lanyard loop on the case, the AirPods 4 ANC do not. I know, how could they? And as we're setting up for the next scene here, as always, if you've made it this far in the video, drop two black hearts down in the comments so I can thank you personally. All right, and so finally, we're on to the one that has everybody in their feelings. It's the iPhone 16 lineup. So the iPhone 16 lineup was supposed to be this huge deep dive into Apple intelligence. It felt like ever since the iOS 18 announcement and then the entire presentation for the new iPhone, all that we were hearing about was Apple intelligence. And so people became very upset when they realized that the phones were launching in September, but Apple intelligence was not. And especially if you're someone who lives outside the US like myself, I live in Canada, they announced that we're not getting Apple intelligence until December of this year. So we're almost one month into the life cycle of the newest iPhone 16 with all the new bells and whistles. However, it's gonna be another two to three months before we can experience any of the Apple intelligence features. So for most people that was strike number one, but for myself, I never really cared much about Apple intelligence to begin with, I was more interested in the phones. But again, people were upset about the phones because they look the same. The only upgrade to the cameras is a new 48 megapixel ultra wide and the addition of this extremely polarizing camera control button. I've made a number of short form videos about the camera control button on the various sizes of the phones. As somebody who likes to use the Pro Max, I find that I will never be able to use this camera control button comfortably just because of where it's placed on the phone. So it feels very awkward to pull this out and then try to take a photo. And I've been forcing myself to get the muscle memory to use this thing, but like it's almost embarrassing at this point. So for example, the other day I was at an event where I met a creator that I've been following for a while, Mylene's Mind. If you've never checked her workout, it's incredible. She is an awesome storyteller. And this was the perfect time to bust my phone out and use that new camera control button and I completely botched it. The button is very finicky. It's super easy to use it just to open the camera app, but when it comes to actually trying to control anything with this menu, it's so hard to maneuver all these things while keeping the phone straight, keep yourself in the frame and not coming out with a blurry shot. So there was this very awkward moment of me fumbling around with the button. It felt like an eternity, but in reality, it was probably only like two or three seconds. But what ended up happening was I just gave up on the capture button altogether and went back to my tried, tested and true method of just using the volume down button to take the photo. So yeah, I'm not saying that the button is useless. Maybe there's people out there that are gonna like using this thing, but for me, it just doesn't work. I don't like the whole double press to try to get menus up and you're trying to slide your finger up and down, but there's that weird friction. So you're skipping over steps and whatever have you. A lot of people just say, well, if that's the case, you know, do the little soft press to get the menu up and then use your finger to actually control everything. And I just feel like if I'm gonna use the button to bring the menu up, but then use my finger to adjust everything, I might as well just use the touchscreen from start to finish. But that one simple annoyance aside, there are a couple of nice things that Apple did here. So for example, they put the camera control button on the entire lineup. So whether you buy the regular 16 or the 16 Pro Max, you're gonna get that camera control button. Next, they did advise that there was a battery boost to all of the devices. And I've personally seen a major difference in the overall battery life of the 16 Pro Max, so much so that I actually wanted to use the Pro first. I figured now that the regular Pro has a 6.3 inch display and shares 
the exact same cameras as the Pro Max, that this would easily be the guy to buy because it also got a battery boost. But maybe I'm a power user or I'm just doing things incorrectly, but this was not able to last me a full day. So I ended up picking up the Pro Max, however, and this is honestly my second one. Originally, I had that new desert titanium color and I really disliked it. So I just went back with natural titanium goaded. The battery on this has actually been incredible and not only that but I've really been liking that ultra wide camera. I think that it takes great photos especially if you're someone that shoots in raw and edits in Lightroom then you're gonna have a blast with this new camera module. This new screen is beastly. It's now I believe 6.9 inches and has super thin bezels without making the phone feel like it's way too big in your hands. But then again I do have very large mitts so maybe I'm biased. But overall, I've had a fantastic experience while using this phone. Would it make sense to upgrade from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max like I did? For most people, probably not. But for someone like myself who creates a lot of content, takes a ton of pictures, I do find so much use in that ultra wide lens and it did make the upgrade useful for me. Not only that, but I'm a battery hog and I don't like being tethered to a cable all the time. I like to take my phone off the charger when I wake up in the morning and not have to worry about it until I go to bed at night. But again, upgrade wise, it's very minimal. If you're coming from a 14 or a 15, you're probably not gonna notice much difference. If you're someone that cares about the camera control button, I mean, yay but you know that this is going to be on the next iphone coming out that will probably have more differences to the phone that you're using right now so again might not be worth the upgrade so yeah i don't know it just felt like a very weird launch this year and again it was extremely polarizing you've got people on one side saying that it's not worth upgrading it's not worth upgrading they're super upset with apple like this is a waste of money and then you've got other people saying that yes the cameras are much improved the battery is much improved i think it's a great phone and the camera control button's kind of cool but aside from that it's impossible to do a full review until those apple intelligence features start to come out but if i had to go down the line of all of this year's releases i would say the only must cop is the airpods 4 with anc the black apple watch ultra is cool but I've seen some horror stories of people brushing this up against a rough surface and then it's revealing natural titanium scratches underneath. And Apple Watch 10 is pretty cool, but for most people, Apple Watch SE2 is still probably the best option. And you'll probably notice that I skipped over the new AirPods Max because honestly, that was the one thing that upset me the most of this entire launch. So we'll have to leave that one for another day. But as always, if you've got any questions, if there's anything about any of these products that you want to know, leave your questions for me down below. But as always, that's it from me. Much love as always. Throwing up two of them. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.